Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here for day three of the Knowledge Conference. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick, and this is theCUBE. theCUBE is a live mobile studio. We come to events like this and many, many others. We did 27 events last year. We'll do around 40 this year. And we're here at Knowledge. It's uh, the ServiceNow big user conference. ServiceNow is a company that participates in the SaaS market, but unlike most SaaS vendors, it doesn't sell to so-called shadow IT. It doesn't sell around IT. Uh, for instance, Workday sells to the human resource professional. Salesforce sells to the sales and marketing professionals. ServiceNow sells to the IT professional. And what they're trying to do is transform information technology in a way that people can run IT like they run a business. Pe people around here call it the ERP of IT. Jeff Frick and I have been talking to numerous customers. This is a, about 4,000 people here. The vast majority are customers. They're more than customers, they're groupies. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the, the CEO of the company, Fred Luddy, we were uh, at a, the big uh, KPMG party last night. Uh, I would say there were probably, Jeff, what, two or 3,000 people there. And when Fred Luddy walked in, it was like Steve Jobs walking into an Apple event. It was just unbelievable. It was, he, he's clearly the personality of the company. And, and, there's, and there's obviously a lot of people here that are new, but there's a, a real hardcore contingent that have been with him, I think, for a lot of the ride. Because as you said, he comes in and it's, Handshakes and hugs and and uh, you know long lost friends. So you know he's definitely a driving force. And I think if you got an opportunity to watch the two interviews that we did with him, unfortunately we didn't capture his keynote. You can really get a sense of of the guy. You can get a sense of of, of really his devotion to developers and developing because that's really what he identifies himself with, as well as kind of his humble nature and really a healthy, uh, enthusiastic respect and and. Uh, and desire to see competition and innovation, even with the, in his own industry. But I, Dave, the thing that impresses me the most time and time again is, and that we've talked about, to transform and to deliver things, you need people, processes, and technology. And it really does feel that this technology is enabling these IT professionals to kind of get a breath of fresh air in their careers, to really convert themselves to be part of the business and not just be service providers inside their own company. And to take, in, to take um, this thing and arm themselves to compete with AWS within their own company for their own internal customers and create stores and branding and promotions. We heard from some of the guests yesterday in terms of their transfer cost analysis and really getting into the business benefits and, and the cost that they're delivering to their internal customers. And then of course, a number of them branching out and starting their own company. So again, I think it's a good indicator of the, re, of the, uh, the health of the technology when you look at the infrastructure that builds around it and people willing to bet their business on that technology. Yeah, so when you see a company like ServiceNow, they're about, they'll do about 400 million this year, they got about 300 million dollars in the bank, they're a public company, they're growing, they grew last quarter at 80 plus percent, 81 percent, they're projecting 60 to 70 percent growth in the coming quarter. Uh, and so when you see a company like this, and it's run by Frank Slootman, who we know, we saw uh, as the CEO of Data Domain, he knows how to drive value, he knows how to, how to grow companies. When you see those dynamics combined with an incredible passion within the customer base, one has to ask yourself, how big can this thing really get? Now we had Mike Scarpelli on yesterday, who's the CFO of ServiceNow, and I asked him, how big is the total available market? And he said that, well the total available market for, uh, or the total market for IT service management is four billion, and we think it's at least double that. So he was pegging the market, and he said this is a probably a conservative estimate at eight billion dollars from a TAM standpoint. I, I think personally it could be a lot bigger than that. It's, it's hard to tell how big this can be. As we heard from Fred Luddy yesterday, he started building, he b started out by building a platform, and an architecture to have this single system of record that could do anything. And of course, as you all know, the problem with a platform that can do anything is people will say, well, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> and so he went out and built an IT service management application because he had experience in that field from his time at Peregrine. He knew that business, and so he built that as a sort of a prototype example, and what happened was people saw it and said, can I buy it? And he said, yeah, sure, and he started selling it, and then of course it took off. I mean, it's just a, it's an incredible story. So the question then becomes, okay, how big can this thing really be? Because what people are doing is there, any process-oriented or forms-oriented application Customers are beginning to use ServiceNow to build out that application. So it's sort of IT out. So everything that IT touches on out. And so you can think of things like you know, real estate, the travel, certain logistics capabilities, anything that's 
forms driven or email driven, um, <clears throat> you know, companies using email uh, uh, or, or things like Lotus Notes for collaboration and, and, and workflow management, ServiceNow is actually a really good fit for us. So it's hard to say how big the TAM is for this. It, it could be absolutely enormous. Now there's some things that we discovered. We've been, all week we've been trying to find people to say something, you know, not so glowing <laughs> about service now. It's kind of getting you know, repetitive here. So we did find you know, a, a few little items here. Now let me sort of break those down and Jeff, you and I could talk about it. First of all, it's the ROI of, of service now, it's kind of a no-brainer, but to actually quantify it and explain it to a CFO is not necessarily a no-brainer because there's a lot of costs associated with the processes, uh, uh, developing the processes, and ripping out all the old processes. So the way IT works is you've got a zillion processes to do asset management or project management or portfolio management or change management and problem management, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, incident management, help desk, all these separate processes and separate databases built up. So to tear those down and cut them over you know, is an expense. Uh, and so a CFO is going to look at that and say, well, it ain't broke, why fix it? So we talked to some customers last night who are passionate about ServiceNow, but they, they can only get it into small pockets within the organization. They can't push it out you know, company-wide, which is the right thing to do. They want to do that, but it's hard for them to, to get the CFO to see that. So that's an example. The ROI, while it's sort of obvious, is a lot of soft dollars involved in that. You know, making IT better. It's the, 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 the theme we've heard here is the cobbler's children. You know, get no good shoes. And so that's sort of the case here. So selling it to the CFO is somewhat challenging. The second thing we heard is that when ServiceNow went public, they really started to push on the services side of the business and professional services, which they used to sort of bundle in for free, is now a for pay activity largely. So we heard a couple of customers saying, you know, that's, that's something that we're going to look elsewhere for. So we're not necessarily going to go with ServiceNow. And I don't know, I'm not sure ServiceNow sees that as a problem. Uh, I think they're, they're fine because they're trying to build up an ecosystem. But I mean, those are really some of the, two of the things. And I think the, the former is relatively big and I think that will crimp ServiceNow's ability to penetrate the market. Having said that, they're growing at 80% you know, plus, and there's a huge tailwind with this company. Yeah, I mean, back to the, your TAM comments. I just want to read a, a quick note I took from Fred, because I want to get it right. But, you know, his vision, we want to be relevant to every employee who carries an electronic device in the enterprise. Every employee who carries an electronic yeah, device. Yeah, so what's the TAM for that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's big. It's, it's really big. So, and as, as Doug said from Sequoia, what he liked about Fred was the clearness of his vision and, and, and really the focus on that vision. And, and, you know, Fred came up with that line. And uh, again, watch it in the, in the uh, on demand on the YouTube channel. The, guy, the guy's legit, he, he believes it. So, again, I think that's a potential concern. I do think a little bit of the you know, the good news, bad news, every coin has two sides with, with Fred being such a significant part of the company like you've seen with Apple and Jobs and obviously Gates with Microsoft and uh, Larry at Oracle, you know, when these companies are really driven and have a culture that's defined by their founder, which is great, um, to be able to maintain that and, 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 and keep that mojo as they scale the company and grow as a big public company, lots of new employees, as we saw every LinkedIn page for every executive we've had on today, doing a little research says we're hiring. We're hiring, we're hiring. So I think that'll be a challenge as well. And, and obviously, as, as you said and, and quoted the Andreessen article, being a public company is a little bit different than being a private company. You know, everything is out there. The good news is when we had the, the services guy on, you know, and you asked him flat out, what's your SLA? What's your uptime SLA? And he didn't bat an eye, he gave us a number. So, you know, their transparency in being a services company and being a cloud company, um, you know, they're, they're trying to be transparent and get right out there with it. Yeah, I mean, we definitely heard some sentiment from the ServiceNow people that, look, we're servicing IT, so unlike the companies that are sort of selling into the line of business, we're selling to the guys that are fundamentally running and supporting the business, so we can't be down. Uh, of course, they're obviously, they have some downtime, but the figures were pretty impressive. It was 99.98, I think, percentage uh, uptime. Now, many of you in the audience may say, oh, 99.98, that's no big deal. It is a big deal, here's why. When you hear things like five nines or six nines, you're talking about the light on the server or the light on the disk drive. When, when ServiceNow talks about 99.98, they're talking about what the user sees. And I promise you, in most organizations, your user application availability ain't 
um, it's, it's typically much lower than that. We all know we, we get, we're on the phone with a, with a bank or a service provider or somebody in the travel industry and they say, oh, my computer's running slow today. And they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting, oh, can I call you back? That happens all the time. That's what they mean by availability, what right. the end user sees. So that's a very high bar that they've set. Uh, and I think that that's, I was impressed by their emphasis on availability and certainly security and you know, from what we're hearing from the customers, while there was some initial concern about that, we're not hearing problems. I mean, here, you know, obviously Amazon is so you know, well publicized, and of course they're a lot bigger company, but you're not hearing any of these types of disasters within the ServiceNow base. Yeah, and, and the other thing is we've talked about kind of the enterprise big three in terms of the SaaS applications, Workday and, mm. and Salesforce. Uh, I haven't personally ever worked in the Workday application, not in the HR business, but I've been in sales, I've worked at Salesforce, and you, know, you get those regular notices. We're going to be down, you know, Sunday from X to Y. And, Please plan and, accordingly. Yeah, plan accordingly, <laughs> and uh, hope, hope it's not the end of the month or the end of the quarter. But you know, that's a part of their business, and the fact that enterprises have accepted that level of, of uh, uptime, and you know, the benefit outweighs the downside, kind of sets actually a bar that it sounds like it's easy for ServiceNow, based on their client uh, base, to, to be. Yeah, so this is a hot company. This is the Cube, Silicon Angle, and Wikibon bringing you the action from all the events around the industry. So today we got more practitioners. So we're going to start off at 9:50. We're on Pacific time, so we're going to start off at 9:50 with Michael Glenn, who's with Agripor. He's an IT practitioner, a ServiceNow customer. We're going to we're going to talk about some of the things he's doing with ServiceNow, <clears throat> and then this week. ServiceNow had a hackathon, and essentially what they did is they, they announced something called App Creator. And App Creator is essentially a platform or a tool set to allow business people, business technology people to build applications. Now you can build this stuff in JavaScript if you want, but you don't have to. And so they had this big hackathon, and I'm sure the guys doing the hackathon were you know, decent programmers, but, but I'm sure some of them you know, weren't. Yeah, well, we, you know, we went in there, we took the camera in, and we talked to a couple of the teams, and it was kind of evenly split. Most of them going, were going old school, probably because you know, the app creator's so new, and they already knew the old way to do it. Okay, so but we'll, so, we'll find out. So we'll you talked to out. some guys who were doing you know, new school. Yeah, I said, you guys going old school, new school, and, and we'll run the clip at some point in time, and most of them said, you know, we're going to go old school. Yeah, so, so we got the hackathon winner. We don't know who that is yet, so we'll find out what he or she built and, and what that's all about. And then we have Petra Zilstra coming on. She's the CIO of KPN. She was one of the nine CIOs that were up on stage with Frank Slootman at the keynote. So we're going to talk to her and find out how she's using ServiceNow and how it's affecting her business and talk a little bit about self-service. We're really going to try to understand how she justified bringing that into the organization. Obviously, that was probably a top-down sell. And then <clears throat> at 11 o'clock, we're going to meet with Arne Josephsberg, who's the CTO of ServiceNow. I met Arna in Waltham, Mass. Uh, a couple months ago, with David Floyer. David Floyer was on the phone, and we went deep into the ServiceNow architecture and the and the vision. <clears throat> He's a former Microsoft technologist, very sharp guy. And one of the things we want to explore today is ServiceNow. Is it SaaS? Is it PaaS? Is it both? Where does it fit? What does that mean from an architectural standpoint? And and where is ServiceNow trying to take this architecture? You know, from a technology perspective into the future and, and, and what kind of problems will it be solving you know, down the road. And then, and then that's going to be basically it for us, as we say, we're going to maybe run some other clips from the hackathon and, uh, and we'll be here all day, uh, well, half a day today. Right, so, half a day today. So, uh, so Jeff, uh, we'll be back uh, right after this and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it with the customers and uh, looking forward to that piece from the hackathon. <laughs> so keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. You can tweet us, I'm at D Vellante, he's at Jeff Frick. We'll be right back after this word.